Everybody is doing it. Small software companies do it, big tech giants do it too, freelancers do it, heck, even web designers do it sometimes. And of course, developers who just started their YouTube careers and try to come up with new video ideas. We all do it. Yes, I'm talking about using GitHub Actions. And in this video, I'm going to show you why you should do it too. Welcome everybody, my name is Thomas, thanks for joining me today. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can write your very first GitHub Action for your Golang projects. So let's go! What are GitHub Actions? Let's have a look into the documentation. GitHub Actions help you automate tasks within your software development lifecycle. It further states that you can run a series of commands after a specified event has occurred. Okay, so I write code and push to the repository. And GitHub does all the dirty work of running the tests, building the binary, creating the Docker image and deploy to the server. <laughs> yeah, that. Okay, let's dive a little deeper and understand how a workflow actually works. GitHub Actions are workflows triggered by events. For instance, a workflow can be triggered on a push to the main branch. A workflow is basically just a container for jobs. Every single job gets executed by exactly one runner. If more than one job is defined, they will be executed by multiple runners at the same time. A runner listens for available jobs, runs one job at a time and reports the result back to GitHub. Every job uses steps to control the order of actions to execute. These actions are commands like test the code or build the binary. They all get executed consecutively, but if one step fails, the whole job fails. This sounds pretty easy, right? Now that we know what GitHub Actions are and how they work, let's write our own very first GitHub Action. Before we start, you can see that I already prepared an empty GitHub repository and also connected my project to it. The first thing you need to do is to create a .github directory. In here, we need a folder called Workflows. This is where you put your workflow files. As soon as any changes happen to our remote repository, GitHub will scan this directory for workflows to execute. So let's create our first workflow file and call it firstworkflow.yaml. Yes, I'm extremely good at coming up with names. The first thing you need to do is to give this little baby a name. I will call my workflow my first GitHub action. Next, we have to define an event that triggers our workflow. In this example, I want this workflow to execute on every single push. You might as well define more triggers in an array like so, but for now, I just want to execute it on every push. Next, let's define the jobs that will be executed. Jobs is actually a group of jobs, meaning that you could define more than one job, which all get triggered by the same event. This might be interesting if you, for example, have a project containing the front end as well as the back end. Then you might want to have a build back end job that runs the steps for your Go back end, and a build front end job that runs the steps for your JavaScript front end. But for now, let's keep it simple and define a job named Job1. I'm going to use a runner from GitHub that runs the latest Ubuntu version on a fresh virtual machine. Oh, this needs to be intended correctly. Now it's time to define some steps. I will simply execute three completely arbitrary echo commands that should definitely not influence you whatsoever. One cool thing with GitHub Actions is that GitHub provides you a marketplace of community actions that we are able to use in our workflows. For instance, let's take this very popular checkout action right here. It simply checks out the repository into the GitHub workspace so we can use it in our workflow. And we will make use of that. First, let me give this step a name. The users keyword tells the job to get the specified community action. In this case, I will be using version 2 of the checkout action. This way, we can run actions against our code like executing scripts or running tests. So all we need is a file with some content. That way, we can run cat to print out the content of our file. If we push the code to the repository, we expect GitHub to spin up a new virtual machine running the latest Ubuntu version and print out all the echo commands as well as the content of the test file. Let's see what actually happens on GitHub if we push the code. After pushing the code, you can see that only the workflows folder is in my repository. If you go to the actions tab right here, you can see that GitHub shows us all our workflows for this repository. At the moment, there's only the my first GitHub action workflow we just created. Down here you can see that there is currently one run queued for execution. After the runner has finished successfully, it looks like this. You can even get more detail on the run by clicking on it. Here you get a summary of all the jobs that have run. If you click on a job, you even get a detailed list of all the steps that are defined as well as their status. This will come in handy if you want to look up where exactly the job failed. You can click on each individual step to get more information. For instance, you can see right here that the operating system is indeed the latest Ubuntu LTS version. 
In the test file content step, you can see that the command was executed and the output was written. To sum it all up, we saw how easy it was to write our first GitHub action workflow. Now let's take what we learned and write some cool workflows for Golang projects. But writing workflows without having a project in the first place seems kind of pointless, right? So we need a project first. I will be using the meal suggester backend I wrote a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, go check it out right now. Now let's move into the editor. I basically copy pasted parts of the code because it has a lot of stuff that I need to show you some cool GitHub action tricks. The service itself is just a simple HTTP server that stores meals into a SQLite database. I also generated mocks and wrote a super simple test file. It only contains one single test case, but it gets the job done. For our actions, we are going to write a continuous integration workflow that triggers if someone creates a pull request. As for the steps, these look as follows. First, we are going to check out the repository so we have access to all our files. Second, we are going to set up a Go environment so we can make use of the Go toolchain. Third, we are going to check the code for flaws using Go vet and Go format. And lastly, we are going to run all unit tests. So for now, this is all to finally begin with the fun stuff, writing a GitHub action workflow for our Golang project. Back at the IDE, let's quickly create a new workflow file called ci.yaml and give it the name continuous integration. It should trigger the jobs on all pull requests. As for the job itself, let's call it run code checks for now. It should also run on the latest Ubuntu version. Now let's define the steps I mentioned earlier. First, we are going to check out our code. The next step is setting up the Go environment. We will be using the setup Go community action for this. You can even define a specific Go version like this. Now for the linting part. Let's run Go format as well as Go vet over all packages. Using Go format, we can make sure that the code that gets merged always complies to the standard Go format. Go vet will make sure that we do not have any obvious problems with our source code. As for the tests, we simply run Go test over all packages. So this is it for our first Golang workflow. To check if this works, we obviously need to create another branch, make some changes, push them and create a pull request. After these steps are done, you can already see in the pull request that the continuous integration workflow has been triggered. After the job has been run and all the steps finished successfully, the pull request will tell you that all checks have passed and is now ready to merge. That was easy, wasn't it? But I think we can even go one step further. I don't know about you, but I love writing tests. And guess what I love even better? having a huge code coverage. So I figure, why not check the code coverage in our workflow and fail if it isn't high enough. In order to retrieve the coverage, we can use the cover mode count flag. Using this, we are going to store the output in a file using the cover profile flag. This will generate this absolutely self-explaining file right here. But do not worry, we can use the cover tool to pass this file and give us an output we can actually work with. Let's use grep with the total parameter and here we go, we have our total code coverage. Since we only want to check the number, we need to pipe it to grep one more time. Passing the E and O flex, we can use regular expressions and only print out the matching part. The regular expression we are going to use looks as follows. First we check only the digits. The plus sign is used to match if the number has more than one digit. Next we escape the dot since our numbers are separated by it and we need to check for digits again. As you can see, we get 17.9 as a result. We can use the basic calculator and pass the L flag to use the standard math library. We can use this to check if a value is lower or greater than another value. Now we can bring it all together and write a simple check if the code coverage is greater than 50%. If it is not, this step as well as the whole workflow will fail. This will make sure that the code that gets merged will have been tested at least to some degree. To test this workflow, again, we need to create a pull request by creating a new branch and push some changes. This time we expect the workflow to fail since our code coverage is below 50%. And this is exactly what GitHub shows us. The job failed because the check code coverage greater than 50% has failed exactly like we predicted. If you open up this step, it will even tell you how far away from 50% your code coverage actually is. Congratulations, we wrote a very cool continuous integration workflow that checks out the code, sets up a Go environment, links the code, runs the tests and ensures code coverage. But the best part is, this isn't just a stupid hello world example. The workflow we built could actually be used in your CI CD pipeline. By using GitHub Actions, you can completely automate your CI CD workflow. The sky is the limit. So if you're using GitHub, definitely make sure to check out GitHub Actions. So how about you? Are you already using GitHub Actions for your Golang projects? 
If yes, how do your workflows look like? If no, what alternatives are you using? Make sure to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button. If you're interested in more content like this, please ring the bell and subscribe to the channel, so you never miss out on any new content. And until next time, keep on coding!